Life is full of challenges, and these challenges often bring discomfort and distress. Many of us think that the best way to get rid of these uncomfortable feelings is to dive headfirst into solving our problems. We believe that by putting in a lot of effort and struggling hard, we can overcome these issues. But if you stop and think about it, this approach might not be as effective as we think. If working extremely hard to solve problems was truly the solution, then why do we still find ourselves facing so many difficulties? Why does it seem like as soon as we overcome one problem, another one pops up right after? One reason for this could be our belief that life is meant to be a constant struggle, where nothing is achieved without hard work. We often think that we need to push ourselves to the limit to make any positive change in our lives. However, this mindset can be quite disheartening and exhausting. I want to suggest a different way of looking at life, one that isn't centered around constant effort and struggle. This approach is more hopeful and uplifting, and it could change the way we deal with our problems. Let's explore this new perspective together. Let's think about a common situation that many of us might have experienced, dealing with money issues. You might not even need to imagine this scenario, Perhaps it's a reality for you right now. It's a problem that many of us have faced at some point, and we all know it's not a good feeling. When we're short on money, it's normal to feel anxious, worried, and stressed. These feelings are natural reactions to financial troubles. In an effort to resolve these issues, we usually do what we've always been told is the best approach to problem solving. We concentrate on the problem and try hard to find a solution. However, there are two major problems with this approach. Intensified negative emotions. Focusing on the money problem often leads to increased feelings of anxiety, worry, and stress. This happens because these emotions are closely linked to our financial struggles. The more we think about our lack of money, the more intense these negative feelings become. Difficulty finding satisfying solutions. Even with all this focus and effort, it's often hard to find a solution that truly satisfies us or resolves the problem. These outcomes are understandable when we consider what the focus on the problem approach really does. By constantly thinking about our lack of money and the emotions tied to it, we get stuck in a state of mind that's all about the problem. This makes it really hard to move to a solution state, a mindset where we can actually find answers. Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. I'd like to adjust this quote slightly. We cannot solve our problems in the same state of consciousness we were in when we created them. This means that the issue isn't always about not thinking effectively. Sometimes it's about where we're directing our attention. If we're constantly focused on the problem and the emotions it brings, it's tough to shift our mindset to one that's open to solutions. What's the real problem? The real issue we're discussing here isn't actually about a lack of money. It's about our emotional response to our financial situation. I understand this might sound unrealistic to some, especially those who are very practical. But let's explore this idea further. Think about what truly hurts in a money problem. It's not just the numbers in your bank account. The real pain comes from the negative emotions associated with it, the anxiety, worry and stress. These emotions are what make us perceive our financial situation as a problem. In many cases, especially in the Western world, people who say they have a money problem aren't facing starvation. Their issue often revolves around not being able to maintain a certain lifestyle, one they see others enjoying. But that's a side point. Imagine for a moment that you could feel completely peaceful and content with your life, regardless of your financial situation. Would you still feel like you're facing an urgent problem? It's possible to feel peaceful and content, even without having everything you think you need. The opposite is also true. Many people have ample material wealth and comforts, but are still plagued by anxiety, depression, stress, and anger. This shows that our emotional state doesn't always correlate with our material circumstances. At its core, the problem is that we don't like how we feel. So what if changing the way we feel about our situation could actually be the key to solving our problems? Instead of focusing on the external issue, in this case, money, perhaps we should focus on altering our internal emotional state. This shift in perspective might be more effective in addressing what we perceive as problems in our lives. 
here's a different approach to solving problems that might seem unconventional, but it's worth considering. You're tired of worrying, feeling bad, and trying hard to solve your problems without ever reaching an end. So what if, instead of using all your mental energy to find a solution and staying stuck in a negative emotional state, you just stop focusing on the problem? What if you shift your attention away from what's troubling you and focus on something that makes you feel good? Try to imagine how you would feel if your problem were already solved. Embrace that feeling, whether it's peace, joy, happiness, abundance, or something else. Whenever you catch yourself slipping back into worry, gently guide yourself back to these positive feelings. If you think this sounds crazy, take a moment to reflect on your life. Consider the most significant problem you're facing and how long you've been trying to solve it using traditional methods. Think about the hours, days, or even years of worry and distress that have gone into this problem without finding a solution. If worry and overthinking were effective solutions, wouldn't you have solved the problem by now? Instead, try treating this as an experiment. Change your approach. Prioritize feeling good right now. Close your eyes and realize that, in this moment, everything is fine. There's nothing wrong, nothing that urgently needs to be done or changed. Focus on tapping into a feeling of peace that's always available to you. This doesn't mean suppressing your emotions. It's important to feel and acknowledge your painful emotions, but don't dwell on them, justify them, or let them grow bigger than they are. Worrying can be addictive, so if it's hard to stop immediately, allow yourself a set time each day to worry, say, 15 minutes. But for the rest of the day, no worrying allowed, not even about your worries. As you start to notice your day-to-day -day experience improving, you may find that you naturally want to reduce your worry time, eventually bringing it down to zero. Give this a try. What's the worst that could happen? Your external situation might remain the same, but your emotional response to it changes. You no longer feel bad about it, and that in itself is a significant improvement. But what about thinking and reason? It's important not to misunderstand the previous suggestion. I'm not advocating for abandoning reason or ceasing to think. In fact, thinking and reasoning are essential and valuable aspects of our lives. I, too, value the power of thought and reason as they are key to effective thinking. The issue isn't with thinking itself, but rather with the type of thinking many of us engage in. The problem lies in repetitive, unproductive thinking that we've been stuck in for years. This kind of thinking is often dictated by our emotions, leading us in circles without any real progress. True effective thinking should be free from the distortions of our emotional responses. Many of us struggle with the same problems throughout our lives because our thinking about these problems is influenced by the emotions associated with them. This makes our thought process part of the problem rather than a solution. Let's consider what's more rational. Spending a lifetime engulfed in worry and anxiety, hoping that our problems will eventually disappear so we can feel good. This approach risks wasting our lives in constant worry without ever truly enjoying what we already have. Or choosing to feel as good as we can right now and then living our lives based on that state of well-being. Thinking is undoubtedly valuable, but not all forms of thinking are helpful. Worrying, for instance is a type of thinking based on negative what-if scenarios. It doesn't contribute to solving problems. Instead, it tends to deteriorate our well-being. Terence McKenna aptly said, worry is preposterous. This highlights that worrying is an irrational response that doesn't align with effective problem solving. It's more productive to focus on fostering a positive state of mind and then using clear, rational thinking free from the cloud of negative emotions, to address our challenges. This approach allows us to think more clearly and find better solutions, while also improving our overall quality of life. But action is the key, right? It's a common belief that action is the key to solving problems. If you're facing an issue and you know exactly what to do to fix it, then certainly taking action is appropriate. But here's a thought-provoking question. If the solution to your problem is clear and actionable, why does the problem still exist? Here's a perspective that might not be widely accepted. Action alone is not the ultimate solution. 
No amount of external action can truly make up for what's misaligned internally. This doesn't mean that taking action can't solve problems. It means that action alone won't lead to a life free from worry. Let's say you work incredibly hard, and despite your fears and worries, you succeed in making a lot of money. But then, new worries emerge. Fears of losing that money, how to invest it wisely, or how to protect it from external factors like taxes or economic downturns. You've moved from one problem to another in a seemingly endless cycle. If mere action were the solution to all problems, then logically, we would have solved them by now. Look around. People are constantly rushing, striving and struggling, yet they often don't seem to make substantial progress in alleviating their fundamental issues. If you're already feeling exhausted from the constant effort, why would the solution be to try even harder? Maybe the real answer lies in taking a step back from all this frantic activity. It might be time to pause, reflect, and ask yourself what you truly want. This introspection can often provide more clarity and direction than any external action. By understanding your true desires and aligning your actions accordingly, you may find a more effective and fulfilling way to address your challenges. I hope this message resonates with you. If you love this video, please share it with your loved ones and share your experience in the comments section. I would love to read and learn from you too. I wish you a beautiful day.